Our ability to get around is greatly dependent on the hip joint. This ball and socket joint supports our full weight and force. It's plenty durable, yet vulnerable to injury, wear and tear, and congenital abnormalities. Problems in the joint can affect the entire body, like when there is too much friction, a condition known as femoroacetabular impingement, or FAI. A number of well-known athletes have suffered from FAI, like the Yankee third baseman Alex Rodriguez, the hockey player Mario Lemieux, golfer Greg Norman, even Lady Gaga, known to get physical during performances. But you need not be sliding around on stage or in a crowded stadium to develop this often painful condition. Deep groin ache, um, also some radiating pain down my right leg. Uh, almost like a shooting burning pain from my hip flexor down into my front part of my leg here. I was having really bad lower back pain. I eventually started having the deep groin pain, which I thought, I, I didn't know what that was related to. I thought maybe it was just normal for women. A tightness kind of in my groin, go like a band. And then at night, I had this constant, constant ache that kept me awake. I just wanted to cut my leg off. I really did. It was terrible. There may be no symptoms in the early stages, but if the condition progresses and inflammation builds, you may feel that dull ache in the groin extending to the thigh, buttocks, and lower back. Stiffness may occur and range of motion affected. Initially, I had injured myself while doing a hockey stop to my right and felt a little pop kind of across my joint. Um, I was able to continue playing hockey that evening and subsequently following many days after that, um, but the pain would not subside. I probably had developed it from years of running, and I've run most of my adult life, um, not marathon running, but I've run pretty consistently. I think if you're active and you like to play sports, and I played soccer when I was younger, I was into yoga, running, and I think those things made it worse. It was probably degenerative in nature, although they could have said it could also have been trauma. But I don't remember anything actually causing, uh, you know, anything that I did or any fall or anything that would have caused trauma to the hip. FAI occurs when the femoral head or ball of the hip joint rubs abnormally against the acetabulum or hip socket. Bone spurs may form in the joint. Impingement is believed to be congenital, but bone spurs are also a natural defense against stress or injury from vigorous activities. Strangely, your body tries to repair itself by building extra bone. And as a result, damage may occur to the labrum, the surrounding cartilage that cushions the hip joint. I suffered in silence for about, I'd say about a good part of nine months before I actually went to get an MRI. Um, when the doctor did some physical testing, he felt pretty confident, uh, based on my symptomology, that I had a labral tear. I really didn't feel any pain or discomfort if I just stayed, uh, you know, inactive. Whenever I got to be active again, that's when it would come on. So, uh, after about three months, you know, on and off uh, therapy, anti-inflammatory, so I decided, uh, you know, doctor sent me for an MRI. And then they, you know, they discovered the, uh, the labral tear. And I saw a hip specialist. He definitely told me that I did not need a hip replacement, but he referred me to a physiatrist. And it was at that point when I said, okay, so are you telling me that this is all in my head? Because I didn't know what a physiatrist was, but I thought it might be a psychologist for people who, but, imagined they had constant pain. 
So <laughs> I, uh, I went to go see the physiatrist and she was wonderful. She immediately told me what the problem was. She sent me for an MRI. She saw the labral tear. Um, she said that I actually had it in both hips. And she also said, I'm not going to lie to you, you have some osteoarthritis too. But the, the major problem was this tear. It took me about three, three and a half years to finally figure out that I had impingement with labral tears. So I'd seen spinal surgeons, chiropractors, and nobody knew what was going on. FAI can often be confused with other ailments like tendinitis or a groin pull. Doctors will test range of motion, but to be sure there's an impingement or labral tear, they will typically order x-rays and MRIs. There are two basic types of impingement, abnormal bone growth around the head and the neck of the femur is known as cam impingement, and around the acetabular socket it's called pincer. It's not unusual to have both types. never had any surgeries, so I thought perhaps, yes, I'll try the mild approach, a little PT, didn't really alleviate much. So I had a double impingement, one on the head of the femur, um, pretty substantial growth, which was, uh, you know, it was sort of like a knuckle there, uh, and then on the joint, uh, inside the joint itself, right kind of at the point where the other impingement was, where the articulation is, and it certainly lent itself to, to tearing my labrum further, and there was no doubt that if I continued, I wouldn't have a labrum to speak of. Uh, so it was really good, a uh, blessing that I got in when I did. So the first hip was done April 4th and the second one was done June 10th. He said that um, if you find out you have double hip impingement that it's a better prognosis if you get both hips done within three months of each other. I could have surgery to repair the tear but I was not really a good candidate for surgery. I had um, at least one cortisone injection in each side, in each hip, and then I broke down and had the PRP. I honestly don't know how it promotes healing, but it uses your platelet-rich plasma. They take your blood and they spin it in this machine, you sit around for about 20 minutes, and then they re-inject it. I guess it was a cam-type impingement uh, because the, uh, the neck of the femur was shaved down to remove some bone spurs that I had there, uh, but the labrum itself in that area was pretty much detached from the acetabular bone section of the hip, so um, I think what the surgeon did was uh, he shaved off uh, the part of the labrum that was frayed and couldn't be uh, saved, and the rest of it, uh, whatever you know, material was left, he sutured back onto the uh, more serious cases may require open surgery. But to repair a torn labrum and to correct the impingement, arthroscopic surgery is commonly used. A hip scope is performed by making two or three small incisions in the joint that will serve as portals for tube-like instruments. A thin telescopic camera called an arthroscope is used to view inside the joint. Rod-like instruments repair and clean the damaged area. It was a rough recovery for the first couple weeks. Um, and then there's a turning point when I started going to physical therapy and things improved pretty fast. I get really frustrated when I feel like I'm, I'm having a setback, and I actually just had my follow-up appointment today. He explained, you know, that I, I will feel pinching occasionally, but that it's great to continue biking, do the stretches, and it can take up to a year to feel completely normal again. I would say that this is my, my new normal, and it feels better than it did before the surgery. So I'm, I'm happy where I'm at, and I know that it'll take a few months to to, you know, feel 110%. Some of these cases with the hip label issues, I think you start to see a lot more of it because I think we're pushing, people are pushing their bodies a lot more, you know, uh, than before, you know, to, to limits that they didn't do before with all these new types of, you know, exercises and, uh, you know, extended range of motion. 
I do a lot of lunges and squats and a lot of core work, sit-ups, planking. But even in addition to that, I will use a resistance band uh, under my knee, squat down and do a crab walk back and forth. Um, that is something that I do a couple of times a week just to strengthen and maintain. And uh, motions on all four hydrants and um, sometimes with weights just to keep, again, the quads, the glutes, and the core. It's so important because if the surrounding muscle groups are stronger, then it takes the um, you know, it takes the pressure off the joint that's been compromised. Before and after pictures are amazing, uh, quite clean and healthy. Um, so, you know, I will, unfortunately, if I continue doing athletics, uh, probably need a hip replacement someday. Um, he feels comfortable about saying I probably can preserve this for some time. Um, so I'm trying to do that. Mm -hmm.